Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a military Humvee convoy, driving across the Afghan desert. Tony Stark, a rich weapons developer is riding in one of these, with soldiers on duty. He's joking with some convoy members, who are genuinely pleased by his persona. But the convoy is suddenly assaulted by unidentified gunmen. The soldiers try to save themselves, but they are slaughtered soon. Tony escapes the Humvee, hiding behind a huge rock. A missile lands nearby, and explodes moments later, but not before Tony notices the Stark Industries emblem emblazoned on it. A small amount of shrapnel enters his body armor, and he is pushed backwards, losing consciousness. 36 hours earlier, Tony Stark is due to collect the Apogee Award in Las Vegas. He is the son of famed weapons developer Howard Stark, and he is a child prodigy, who created his first circuit board when he was four, his first V8 engine when he was six, and graduated summa cum laude from MIT, when he was 17. His parents died in a car accident in 1991, when he was 21, he took over as CEO of Stark Industries. Colonel James Rhodes, prepares to present the prize to Tony, but he is not present. Obadiah Stane, Tony's right-hand guy takes the award in his place. Tony is later discovered partying in a casino by Rhodes. A reporter, Christine Everhart stops him on his way out, with some concerns about the ethics of his weapons business. He deflects her questions with quick quips, and the two wind up spending the night together, at Tony's seaside house in Malibu. Christine is awakened the next morning, by a voice on a computer display. It's Jarvis, the AI program in charge of Tony's home and research lab. His human assistant, Virginia Pepper Potts, greets Christine as she leaves the house. Pepper assists Tony with some business, before he departs for the airport, where his plane awaits. Tony converses with Rhodes while on flight, and tries to get Rhodes to relax, in response to Rhodes' dissatisfaction with his relaxed attitude. They arrive at a military station in Afghanistan to demonstrate his company's latest project, the Jericho, an advanced super-missile system, and they are soon drunk, and leering at the flight attendants. He receives a call from Obadiah following the demonstration, and they are both delighted with how the show went. Tony refuses to ride with Rhodes, and takes off in another Humvee, where the ambush from the beginning occurs. Tony subsequently regains consciousness in a cave. A bizarre contraption, haphazardly connected to a car battery, is attached to his chest. Dr. Ho Yinsen, another detainee, says that he operated on Tony, but was unable to remove all of the shrapnel. Yinsen devised a device, basically an electromagnet, to prevent the leftover shards from shifting and causing additional harm to his heart. The militants who kidnapped them walk into the room. They want Tony to construct them a Jericho missile, according to Yinsen. Tony refuses, and they torture him, submerging him in water. Hours later, the terrorists, members of an organization known as the Ten Rings, display a massive arsenal of weaponry, manufactured by Stark Industries. Tony appears to cave, and begin construction on the missile, but he has other ideas. He builds a tiny version of an arc reactor, simplified from a much larger design used at his company's headquarters, with Yinsen's steady doctor's hands, and palladium recovered from his weapons. The power output is sufficient to power his heart for 50 lifetimes, as well as keep the shrapnel in his heart from shifting anymore. Yinsen tells Tony a little about himself. He grew up in Golmira, an Afghani village that was assaulted by the Ten Rings, and has no idea if his family is still alive. He also admits he met Tony years ago, at a conference, but Tony was probably so drunk that night that he doesn't remember him. Tony is pushed on, and appears to reconsider his mind. He starts designing a weapon system, an armored suit, fueled by the arc reactor, that he would wear and deploy to combat the terrorists. Midway through construction, Rasa, the head of the Ten Rings arrives, and threatens to torture Yinsen, because he believes Tony is not working as hard on Jericho as they would want. Tony bargains for Yinsen's life, claiming he would make an excellent assistant. Rasa grants them one more day to finish. Tony finishes his project overnight, working feverishly. Yinsen straps Tony into the completed armored suit, and instructs him on how to exit the cave. As he powers up his suit, they detonate a device inside the cell door, to distract the guards. Yinsen realizes they will run out of time. Despite Tony's protests, he grabs a revolver and flees to distract the remaining guards. Tony, his suit now fully charged, muscles his way through the cave. The guards try to stop him, but his suit deflects their weapon fire easily, and he beats and kills them. He also launches one of the suit's missiles towards Rasa, who is thrown out of the way by the blast. He discovers Yinsen mortally injured halfway out of the cavern, who explains that sacrificing himself was his intention, in order for Tony to escape. Yinsen's family has already passed away, and he will see them again in the afterlife. 
Tony expresses his heartfelt gratitude to Yinsen, for saving him. He turns his suit on the surviving terrorists, lighting flamethrowers and firing missiles. Yinsen's final words to Tony are not to waste his second shot at life, he destroys their arsenal, and launches himself out of the valley using a crude jetpack. He survives a crash in the desert, and wanders through the desert, until two US helicopters fly above, a troop of soldiers led by Rhodes, immediately flying him back to the US. Pepper wants Tony to get medical treatment, but he only wants two things, an American cheeseburger, and a company press conference. So Tony comes in front of a group of reporters, clearly humbled and no longer the arrogant CEO he was before, and explains he intends to immediately shut down Stark Industries Weapons Manufacturing Division. Agent Phil Coulson, from the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistic Division, SHIELD, approaches Pepper. They want to speak with Tony about his kidnapping. She arranges for them to meet. In evening, Obadiah confronts Tony about his conduct, outraged. Obadiah understands that their company's stock value will suffer as a result of this disclosure. Tony reveals his Mark I chess piece to him, but refuses to allow the item to be researched for production. He creates an upgraded and much more powerful mini-arc reactor, the Mark II chest piece, but can't install it without assistance. His assisting robot, Dummy, attempts but fails to insert the arc reactor, so Pepper assists. He pays a visit to Rhodes, and requests assistance with a new private project. Rhodes disagrees with his attitude, and believes he is suffering from PTSD, as a result of his capture, and needs time to recuperate. Tony's idea is revealed to be an improved armored suit. He discards many of the components, analyzing a 3D CGI mapped image, optimizing the design. Meanwhile, Rasa searches the desert for all the bits of the Mark I suit, that Tony left behind, seriously scarred by the rocket attack in the cave. Tony decides that the first thing he needs to do is improve the armor's flight mechanism. Pepper comes in to test the stabilizers, and leaves a gift, a paper-wrapped package on his desk. Obadiah pays him a visit, and informs that the board of directors have filed an injunction to acquire control of Stark Industries. Tony is unconcerned, because he still owns a controlling stake in Stark Industries. After several fruitless and painful attempts, Tony perfects his flight system, and is overjoyed at the idea of flying. He communicates with Jarvis to track the suit's progress, and against its caution, takes it for a test flight, and is blown away by the suit's capability. He pushes the envelope for high-altitude flying, but the frigid air causes the suit to become ice-coated, and his power supply goes down, but narrowly manages to reignite his thrusters in time. When Tony gets home, and recovers from his crash landing, he opens the box Pepper had left behind. Inside is the Mark I arc reactor, encased as a trophy, with the message, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. He analyzes more data, and decides to rebuild the suit using gold titanium, solving the icing and weight problems. He meets with Agent Coulson, who still wants to know about his incident. Tony leaves to dance with Pepper, and they share a moonlit moment together. Christine, the reporter, confronts him angrily, showing him photographs of his weapons being used by a terrorist group, yesterday in Golmira, Yinsen's hometown. Tony confronts Obadiah about it, who discloses that he is the one who filed the injunction against Tony. He refers to himself as an ironmonger, and has no reservation selling Stark Industries weapons to both sides of the battle. Tony returns home, enraged, and watches news reports about the deterioration of the situation in the Golmira. He puts his hand repulsors to test, blasting out glass panes. When the new suit is finished, he sails to Golmira at hypersonic speed, determined to redeem his company's wrongs. Terrorists are rounding up citizens for detention and execution. His armor is far superior to theirs, and defeats the first gang in seconds, without causing any innocent fatalities. He leaves the group's leader, Ross's main lieutenant alive and unprotected, for the villagers to exact their vengeance. Tony is shot down by a tank shell while flying to recover his weapons. He answers by launching a mini-missile at the tank, and destroys the captive Jericho missiles. Rasa arrives just in time to witness Tony take off. At Edwards Air Force Base, they discover someone in flight, mistaking Tony for a renegade drone. Rhodes is questioned about any fresh developments. He contacts Tony, who professes to be unaware of what is going on. Tony is then pursued by two F-22 Raptors. He tries to outrun the jets, but they outrun him. Tony calls Rhodes and says that he is in charge of the unidentified craft. Rhodes is enraged at the unapproved equipment, and is shocked when Tony explains that the equipment is himself in his new invention. One fighter plane hits Tony, hurtling him onto the wing of the second. The pilot's parachute does not open. Still under fire, Tony flies in and deploys the parachute in time. 
He persuades Rhodes to dismiss what happened with the Jets as a training exercise. When Tony returns home, Pepper apprehends him, while the robotic system is removing his suit. He quips that she has seen him in far worse situations. Meanwhile, Obadiah pays a visit to the Ten Rings camp, revealing that he paid the organization to capture and kill Tony, but when they made their tape, they realized who Tony was, and demanded a much higher price. Obadiah immobilizes Rasa, and steals the remnants of the Mark I armor, using a high-powered sonic gadget, that induces temporary paralysis. Obadiah then orders the execution of everyone in the camp. Tony tries to persuade Pepper to help him, feeling that nothing else matters but saving the people he puts in danger. Tony's dedication moves Pepper, and she agrees. She enters Obadiah's office with a flash drive to copy files from the computer. She discovers a video from the terrorists, revealing Obadiah was responsible for Tony's capture. Obadiah walks into the office and notices her at the computer, but she manages to conceal what she is doing. She exits, but he recognizes what she was up to. On the way out, Pepper sees Agent Coulson and tells him he can have his interview right now, so he can accompany her safely out of the building. Obadiah meets with his development team, who are working on his own armored suit based on the Mark I. They have rebuilt, but are unable to miniaturize the arc reactor. Obadiah is enraged, but backs down when the main developer says he isn't the genius Tony is. Obadiah realizes he has one more choice. He arrives at Tony's residence, and uses the sonic weapon to paralyze him. Obadiah yanks out Tony's chest piece, mocking him about how it would be the flagship invention in a new era of warfare. Tony knows after he leaves that he has just one chance of survival, the preserved arc reactor that Pepper gave him as a gift. He staggers down to his workshop, and nearly dies, attempting to grab the reactor, which dummy hands him. He installs the reactor just as Rhodes arrives, who informs him that five agents have gone to apprehend Obadiah, but Tony knows it is far from adequate manpower. Rhodes watches Tony gear up, amazed by the armor. He asks if Tony needs anything, who says to keep the skies clear. Pepper Coulson and many other agents arrive at Obadiah's research center. They discover the Mark I armor, as well as a storage facility where something else is housed. Just then, a massive robotic suit appears and attacks them. It's Obadiah's counterpart suit, codenamed the Iron Monger, powered by the chest piece he stole from Tony. As Tony flies towards the research facility, Jarvis warns him he only has about half the power in the suit, because the older chest piece wasn't designed to power the Mark III for sustained flight. The two ironclad warriors start a massive brawl in the streets, near Stark Industries, as Tony tries to protect the innocent citizens. Tony takes off into the sky, dragging Obadiah along, who struggles, but his suit soon begins to freeze, the same icing problem as Tony's earlier suit. Tony hovers above, as Obadiah begins to descend back to Earth, the older arc reactor gradually loses power, and Tony falls back to Earth, landing on top of his plant, which is now functioning on auxiliary backup power. Back on Earth, Obadiah confronts Tony again. Tony disables the weapons tracking system in Obadiah's suit, and evades him long enough for Pepper to overload the building's arc reactor, generating a shock wave powerful enough to damage Obadiah's suit. The shock wave from the reactor knocks out the Ironmonger suit, which falls into the reactor, killing Obadiah. Tony survives after his original mini arc reactor sparks back to life. Days later, Rhodes holds a press conference about the event with the two robots. Tony is impressed with the moniker the newspapers come up with, Iron Man, and decides to adopt it. Agent Coulson gives a cover tale concerning Obadiah's death, and the truth about Iron Man. Pepper thanks him. Tony returns to the reporters, and is prepared to comply with the cover story. However, as he is about to speak, he tosses down his notes, and exclaims, I am Iron Man, sending the press into a frenzy. The end. Thank you for watching.